I'm uh, Rob Kibler, CEO and co-founder of uh, Dianics Innovations. And I'm uh, honored and energized to be here today. Uh, I have a non-technical background. So when I say honored, it's good to be among so many exceptionally bright people, present some exciting research that we're doing at Dianics. Uh, and I say energized because I'm a, a brand new dad. And last night was the first time in two months that I've slept for a period longer than two hours. So if I'm a little out of it, then <laughs> that, that, that's probably why. Um, um, show of hands before we kind of dive in. Has anyone been diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea at all? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah said another way. Does anyone have a spouse or a bedtime partner that's kind enough to accuse you of snoring at night? Anybody? Okay. Very good. Well, it's actually, um, you know, it's my good sleep and then sleep apnea that kind of brings us here today. So let me, let's uh, kind of dive right in. Um, so just to introduce Dianics, again, we're, um, you know, a, a small Ohio-based uh, startup in 2020 focusing on uh, the, focusing in the field of sleep apnea. Uh, we're a pre-revenue, pre-FDA company, and we're developing sensor technology that attaches to uh, oral appliances that are on the market. Uh, oral appliances are uh, one of one of the few main uh, therapy modalities to treat obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, so our products are sort of the sensor technology that captures raw data, uh, transmits it, uh, or takes it from the, from the device, uh, puts it on the cloud, and then kind of gives the patient and the provider an opportunity to sort of look at the data to understand how effective uh, the oral appliance might be uh, in treating someone's sleep apnea. Uh, we, use, uh, we leverage a SaaS revenue model uh, and leverage remote patient monitoring. Uh, this expansion of these codes allow physicians to, to look at data and, um, and bill for their time. And uh, that's kind of a, that's at the very heart of our, of our revenue strategy. So, and our technology, of course, is uh, patent pending. So, uh, boy, sleep apnea, it, you know, I, I was surprised to not see so many hands. Uh, we're all in there. Okay, yeah, for sure. Uh, to, see, to see hands pop up, and this, this is actually quite a problem, right? The World Health Organization estimates close to 1 billion cases of uh, sleep apnea between the ages of 30 and 69. Uh, so it's a big, big problem globally. Uh, comorbidities include congestive heart failure, atrial fibrillation, hypertension, stroke, right? Big deal. Uh, if, you're, if your cardiologist is, is telling you that you have these issues, it's something that, that you want to certainly get fixed. Um, and the, uh, you know, the cost, at least to the U.S. economy, uh, each year is around $150 billion. So Again, the three sort of main uh, therapy modalities are our sleep apps. We've probably all seen the Darth Vader mask uh, once or twice in our lives. Uh, sure, the technology is getting better and smaller, but it's still, uh, you know, path adherence, path compliance is, uh, depending on which study you look at, it can range anywhere from 40% uh, up to 70 or 80%. So while it is the gold standard, uh, it's not fun to wear, right? No one wants to, to, it's not sexy to wear. I mean, in our, in a separate business, we have a, a, a clinic where a 62-year-old woman said, you know, my husband doesn't look at me the same when I'm wearing my mask. So uh, this, this is a picture of an oral appliance. You can think of an oral appliance. Um, to, to be almost like an Invisalign, right? There's a top tray, uh, there's a lower tray, and there's just sort of a mechanism to, uh, to kind of bring your, your lower jaw or your mandible forward and keep your airway open during sleep. And there's a host of, of surgical procedures uh, that, that can allow clinicians to treat sleep apnea. CPAP is so bad, people are willing to have surgery to fix the problem. Um, so let's kind of dive in a little more, uh, understand about, uh, about oral appliance therapy. Um, again, it's, you know, it's, it's sort of, um, it's, it's growing in acceptance. Um, and a lot, a lot of the reason that, that oral appliance isn't widely adopted by clinicians is because there's, you really can't evidence the, the efficacy of the therapy. So with CPAP, uh, when a user puts on a CPAP, you know, when they do that, you know, the pressure of the, of the system, you know, how much air leaks, there's a whole host of data uh, that clinicians and patients have, right? While with oral appliance, it's, it's just not on the market. Um, so back in 2020, um, myself, two dentists and sleep physician, I think we had just enough cocktails at happy hour to think that we were just gonna, you know, start this company and, and, uh, and give the market what it, what it demands. Um, the, the way that you can monitor the effectiveness, at least now, of oral appliance is, is really, um, in the sleep lab or with a home sleep apnea test. Um, so again, it's, it's sort of a limited, uh, you know, one, two nights of uh, beta. As you might imagine, uh, you know, not every single night of sleep is the same. Uh, I know mine was certainly much better uh, last night than it has been in the past, but uh, it's, it's really critical for the uh, for patients and providers to understand um, 
it, what, what, how, is, how a patient is responding to therapy throughout the course of therapy. Uh, so, you know, we use PPG sensing again. So it's just kind of a, a layout of our, of our uh, design. This is our, our, our prototype. Uh, this, <laughs> this, uh, this, this sensor in its current form looks a lot like a, you know, a big dip that a major league baseball player would have in. So whereas our, our beta, our beta product is, uh, is flexible, hybrid electronic board, much, much, much better. Um, so yeah, we have, kind of using PPG, essentially we just, you know, look at the light transmitted uh, into the skin and measure the, uh, the reflectance. So we're looking mainly at heart rate and uh, SpO2. Um, again, the, this, the, the beta version of our, of our product is, is um, it's not a CPAP, right? It's less cumbersome. Folks are already wearing uh, oral appliances. So, you know, we just want to, um, to try and, and build on the acceptance of that therapy. So we're looking at um, different stages, uh, different stages of sleep. So with, with our uh, proof of concept, we were able to tell when someone uh, was awake, whenever they fell asleep, uh, when they woke up, we can measure uh, non-rapid eye movement sleep or REM, and then we can also measure uh, REM sleep as well. Um, and we're also looking at uh, sort of the, the key clinical biomarker of, of sleep apnea is, is an AHI or, hap or apnea hypopnea index. So uh, we were really looking at uh, measuring that as well. Uh, AHI helps physicians and patients understand sort of the severity of OSA. There's uh, mild, moderate, and severe sleep apnea. So, um, and then also we're, we're all monitoring a significant drops uh, in, in SPS2 signal as well. Uh, so let's kind of take a look at what's, uh, what we were able to observe. Um, so we compared our product with uh, an FDA-approved diagnostic uh, called a night owl, uh, which the user wore kind of on the finger there. Uh, we also uh, compared it with the Well U02 ring and the, M the EMA sleep uh, oxygen monitor. So um, as you can see, you know, on the SPO2 side, me measuring um, PPG intraorally is an, is an interesting site, right? Um, we're, we're so the light artifacts, uh, the skin pigment artifacts that Steve mentioned earlier, um, you know, we're, we're kind of thinking that we're not dealing with those as much as, as you would with a, you know, with a night owl or with a, uh, with a sensor that goes kind of uh, on, on the outside of the skin. So we can actually see a higher, a higher baseline uh, when we measure oxygen levels intraorally, right? And we found, and we think that that's because of the site uh, and the lack of uh, difference in the skin pigmentation. So we're very encouraged by these by these results, um, you know, both in heart rate and, and in SpO2. So uh, again, you know, we're, our, our product is called Butterfly. We're able to measure um, total sleep time of, of five hours and 36 minutes. Um, we took 276 minutes of non-REM, 60 minutes of REM. Uh, reported 56 times, uh, drop in SpO2. Uh, and Syed, I don't know if, if this user in particular uh, is, is aware that they have sleep apnea. Maybe you should let her know. Uh, so when we compare that data with night owl, uh, it is relatively similar, right? Five hours and 10 minutes, and the, uh, the measurements of, of non-REM uh, and REM and even AHI are, are, are uh, quite similar and, and very, again, very encouraging for us. Um, so why, you know why is this important? Uh, again, PAP compliance is, is so low, 40 to uh, you know 40 to 60 percent, uh, whereas oral appliance compliance is, is much higher. Uh, folks that wear both a CPAP and an oral appliance prefer an oral appliance by like 91 percent, um, which which is you know the goal of any therapy is to get a patient to use it um, and to treat their apnea so it doesn't result in, in these comorbidities and and uh, Concerns with with life, and um, so we're, you know that, that's kind of the reason why we're here. So uh, accuracy of intraorally measured cardiorespiratory parameters validated with three FDA approved or clear devices. Uh, this uh, we, we tested this on five patients over the course of five nights. So you know, of course we want to make sure that we're uh, doing more research and strengthening that argument. Um, but we can estimate total sleep time, REM, and AHI uh, with an accuracy of more than 12% around 84%, which is fantastic. Uh, when we compare it with, again, FDA approved models or FDA approved devices, rather. Um, and you know, the main benefit of the technology is it's, it's integrated in, into the therapy, right? It's not an extra wearable. It uh, doesn't, need, doesn't require 
uh, so, so I'm gonna plug it in to charge it, uh, or, or even just to remember to wear it while I go to sleep, it's embedded in the therapy. Um, so we know the patient is wearing it. Any questions?